What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fath, my man, Jake Brody. We're going to be talking through week six of the NFL. Um, and thank goodness for showdowns is all I've got to say so far is because I, I can't seem to, to lose on a showdown and I can't seem to, to win on the, the full slate yet. So we're going to try and correct that this week and uh, get after it. Brody, how you doing, man? We're going to, well, I should say, we're going to go position by position and uh, we'll talk about the stacks and stuff like that at the end. Uh, it will also, you know, probably come up as we bring up quarterbacks and whatnot. So, uh, with that said, Rody, how you doing? And uh, what do you think of this week? I know it's uh, it's it's still early, and uh, yeah, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean it's early this week. We're doing the show before the showdown tonight. Sometimes we do it during the showdown. I get a little hyped up during the showdown, but tonight mm-hmm. we're we don't have a game going on. We're focused on this this slate this week, you know. And um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. We got a lot of London games now this year, so we're losing a game there. You know, a lot of primetime games as well going on. So showdown's been a really fun time. You you really got to check out our showdowns. Um, stuff that we put out too. So, and, and, and that's a really good time too. So I'm feeling good about this week and uh, we're going to get after it here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I would encourage you guys to check out our packages. I mean, we, we have some, you know, our, our pricing is, I, we feel like significantly less than anybody, any of our competitors uh, that, that are offering anywhere near as much. And uh, I, suggest, I suggest you guys check it out. Um, anyway, with that said, let's get into it. Uh, we'll talk about it. It's, it's kind of a fun week uh, that I actually, the only problem I'm running into when when I've looked through things so far is that I think I kind of like a little more of the chalk than maybe some other people do. I'm sorry, sorry maybe, maybe I'm supposed to, but we'll we'll see about that. For quarterbacks, I I have my top quarterbacks this week as Justin Fields and Matt Stafford. Potential for a little bit of wind in that game in Chicago that could affect my feeling on Fields. Although mostly I, I'm playing him for the rushing upside, combined with the fact that DJ Moore is now officially uh, <laughs> his target. Um, I like those two. Those are probably my favorites. Um, I think that you're going to see a lot of ownership on Trevor Lawrence. I'm still not sure what I want to do with that game because I sort of like the idea of playing Etienne and getting the, uh, you know, and and maybe the defense or something like that. I I just think Jacksonville's defense has been really good. So not not trusting that game is going to stay as a total shootout. You're going to have some ownership on Burrow. Um, look, obviously looked finally like old Burrow last week. So I, I get it, but I would rather, you know, spend down in some of these spots and play guys like Dobbs, play guys like Stafford. Uh, Justin Fields is, is the expensive one I'm playing. And uh, I'm probably not going to get to the uh, to the, to the spend-ups outside of field very much this week uh, as of right now, at least I'm not planning to. What looks good to you, Rody? And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe some chalky ones and and, and some, 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 you know, lower-owned stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think you said a lot of good names. This was an odd week for quarterback, for sure. I mean, we got no Patrick Mahomes on there. We got no Justin Herbert again this week. Uh, they play Thursday and Monday night, so we're gonna we're gonna be stuck with some of these other guys. You know, obviously I play a lot of Chargers and Mahomes usually, so definitely gonna have to find someone different. I I mean I I like your calls a lot. I think Stafford's gonna be a good play at sixty one hundred going against Arizona. I think I'm taking. I have two survivor pools going pretty good right now, and I think I'm gonna burn the Rams this week. I mean they don't really have a mm-hmm. good future value this week, so I think I like Stafford to win that game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't mind going on the other side, 5,200 for Dobbs. He's been reasonable. Rams haven't looked good. That I mean, the Rams look like they've been putting into some shootouts. They slowed out down the second half last week, but um, I, maybe they have a bigger game this week. Uh, Arizona seems to be in these shootout-type games lately, so mm-hmm. I think I think this is a good game to target both sides. Um, Burrow, I haven't been behind him much. I do have usually have one Burrow stack a week or in a, in a bigger buy-in or medium buy-in. Um, I usually pro- – I'll stick to that gun this week, but I, I don't probably – don't mind the other side of that. You know, Gino hasn't lit it up lately, and he's going to be lower on. Maybe he's a lower on play at 5,700 I like. I just like a lot of his weapons. I know they run the ball a little bit with Walker a lot because Walker's usually a play that I have um, as well. And I, I also don't mind the golf play here at 6,400. Um, some of these lower projected guys here that we got showing up here. But, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the the ownership's a lot lower. You know, like if I'm on St. Brown plays this week, it looks like he's going to. Um, mm-hmm. golf's got a good pairing option. Sam Laporta's kind of hurt right now. He's questionable, I think. So I don't mm-hmm. know the status on him. I seen him pop up on the, on the stuff today. I think he's a good pairing, obviously those, those guys. And, um, we'll see what happens. They do run the ball a little bit much, but I mean, I like some of the run backs on the Tampa Bay side that like, you know, the guy, the receivers they got over there. So I kind of, mm-hmm. I kind of stick my stacks with some run backs. I know people have been talking, you don't run it back. A lot of the contest sims that we got, are showing that you get good leverage lately with not running it back. And last week you could have ran some good stacks with not running it back mm-hmm. as well. So like lately, I mean, that's a viable strategy to stack a team that's good 
and don't run it back, you know. Like, I mean, right here we got Miami Dolphins. I mean, they've been exploding, right? We haven't talked about Tua here. Yeah. Maybe you don't run it back with a Carolina guy. Yes, Adam Thielen has been crushing as a run back, but maybe this week he doesn't and they don't do anything and Miami just runs away with it. And then you just have them stacked up, you know. So, mm-hmm. no, Devin Hacken, we're going to talk about Moster here in a minute too. So, let's get mm-hmm. to that. I'll, I'll get, give it back to Bobby. Yeah, I'll jump over to running back just one second. There's a few names you mentioned. Well, a couple, one you mentioned um, that I think is kind of interesting, and that's Geno Smith. Yep. Um, I also think that uh, I think it's okay. I think Cousins' price is going to make people not play him. It's probably worth noting that he's been one of the top five quarterbacks, I believe, uh, three of the five weeks so far, maybe even four. Yeah. Um, so I, I I think that's that's another that's another interesting one. The, the the get wild one that I was considering because he may actually be forced to to do a little more, even if it's just quick passes that that's going to be a lot of yards after catch. I don't think San Francisco is going to have a great time running the ball against Cleveland, and I think that's a really good front line that might force Purdy into you know into into having to be more of a a quarterback than in, for fantasy purposes. So certainly some other names to consider. Obviously we'll we'll finish up that stuff on uh, Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, I will move over to the running back. And and I like your idea partially of the, the Miami thing because you're going to have, as of right now, the, the highest owned running back is is going to be by by a long shot, probably Mostert. Um, and uh, we we don't have the, the A-chain this week. I do think that Jeff Wilson is a viable option at 4,300. Um, I, I, the way these guys use everything, and, and Wilson, by the way, for those who don't remember, these guys were both the, the, the running backs in San Francisco for a while, a couple of years ago. Uh, Wilson is really, really fast also. And another one of these guys they could use in the backfield at the same time as Mostert and sort of taking a little bit of that A-chain role. Um, so the, the, I, I will probably be below the field on Mostert just because the ownership is so high and maybe get a little Jeff Wilson to get creative. Uh, Josh Jacobs is going to be really popular. And I know that everybody's scared about those New England things or used to be scared of it. This New England team, I don't think should be feared. But I don't necessarily love Jacobs and Mixon as the next two most popular guys. So I, I'm going to be underweight probably the most owned running backs. I will be overweight the Kyron Williams. I will be overweight Bijan Robinson. I'll be overweight Travis Etienne. I will be overweight significantly. Maybe my favorite one, uh, Alexander Madison. That's partly because I like that Chicago-Minnesota game. And then you have uh, – Brees Hall is interesting at 6K. He should be sub-10% owned and – they let him loose last week and Philadelphia is a good team. Don't get me wrong with a good front line and maybe they can't move the ball. Maybe they stack the box and all that. Brees Hall can make one play and then get his, you know, 10, the rest of his 10 carries for 30 yards. Maybe he gets in the end zone twice. I think that 6k price tag is kind of interesting. Um, so that's sort of my, my plan in terms of running back is to, to, to go for the, the the tier just below the, the higher owned guys, and then maybe play Jeff Wilson. And the other one um, who's going to show up for me is going to be the other cheap one is going to be uh Surprisingly, he's not actually projecting all that well. Uh, I think Rashawn Johnson is a reasonable play in that Minnesota game, also. So, uh, definitely, definitely, as you can see, I'm, I'm heavy on that Minnesota Chicago game as of right now. Yeah, I see that. I think that's a good call. And hey, guys, remember last week I talked about Brees Hall before everyone got on him. I mean, he was that's right. Like, you did. He was like seven to ten percent owned, and then everyone started talking about him by Sunday, and he got up to like fifteen percent owned, and then it was like because of the news that came out. But I talked to him kind of like right at that. News came out type before that, you know. I mm-hmm. liked him this week at fifty four hundred. His price last week, so, um, and then he did pretty good. So that's pretty good, you know. Well, yeah. Right. So um, let's get to a few more. He's up about six hundred bucks, um, at six thousand. You know, he's going against the Eagles. I think they're going to probably be. That's an interesting game to target. I'm not on his Mixon, but Mixon's price is sixty three hundred. I haven't been on the Bengals all year. Been working out, obviously. Yeah. So last week, if you just had Burrow to chase, you were fine. Yep. That's right. That's what you needed, and you were good, right? That last touchdown really put Burrow up there over the top of everybody. So I like Mostert. Obviously, he's chalky, so maybe I'll be a little bit over the way. ETN was a good, I think, a a call there. You know, in that Jacksonville game, they could they could, you know, he he looked good last week in um, London or wherever he played. Um, mm-hmm. It looked pretty good. He he scored. Uh, Josh Jacobs, I've played him in showdown, but I've been lower on him this year. McCaffrey's getting priced up a little bit, but he is a beast. Um, you know, David Montgomery scoring a lot. He's going to be high owned again. Um, DeAndre Swift's a player I've been playing too for the, for the Eagles, but I, I'm, I'm on caution. I really like the Jets defense there, but I think maybe a bunch of dump offs could come his way. So mm-hmm. I'll probably sprinkle him in a little bit. Madison's another guy going against Chicago. That's been really weak. And if he's going to be lower owned, I know everyone's like, oh, Cam Akers is there. Madison mm-hmm. did get in the touchdown. He got a screen pass last week. 
Uh, 5,600, I mean, he could, could do some work against Chicago this week. I don't mind that play at, fit, at the price. Um, you know, we got Ford back in our lives again for Cleveland against San Francisco. That's probably not a great play because he's obviously going against a really phenomenal defense. They're going to be passing the whole time. Miles Sanders was, a you know, a really terrible play last week. Um, he He's getting a lot of usage and work, but he's just not doing anything with it. Miami, they're probably going to be down. So I'm probably going to be very tight on the running backs. I still do like a little Damian Pierce. He got in the box last week. He's going to be a higher own play. It seems I'm falling on the higher own plays this week too. Um, like Bobby said, he might be a little over the weight on some of the chalk this week. It looks like I'm getting a lot of this same chalk. Kamara, yep, he's chalky as well if you see the ownership right here. Um, so those are guys that you know are going to be in a, in my lineup. Rashad White might be a play um, at 5,500, a little bit of single-digit ownership. Um, it might be a, I like the price. Um, I usually get expensive in some of my stacks, and I want to pay. I want to go with these mid tier, these five to six k running backs. I really like. Um, mm-hmm. But I think I think this week we might have to spend up on a couple like Mostert and Travis to get six to seven k guys here that I like uh, mm-hmm. mostly, and maybe a little Mont- Montgomery. So I might be I might be a little chalk in the running back spot as well this week. Yeah, and I, and I think that, that I think it's okay. I think there's a lot of different mid tier passing options that I like quite a bit. And, and I'll, 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 I'll jump over to that now because yeah. um, uh, whether if Marquise Brown plays, I love Marquise Brown at 5,300 against my Rams. Um, if he doesn't play, you have the option of literally building a really cheap stack with, uh, with Dobbs. And then you're going to have Wilson and, 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 uh, and help me out. I can't think of uh, the guy we like with guy. We like to take shots with uh, Rondale Moore. Um, oh, yeah. I, I just think that, 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 that they're so cheap. And that, that you need to play cheap if you want to stack that game because I am going – I was at the Rams game on Sunday. Um, I'm just going to say right now, I don't think there's any difference between Cooper Cup now and ever before. He is the exact same. Um, the Eagles do leave the field, the middle of the field open a little bit, so he got a lot of those plays. I think Cooper Cup is 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 a tremendous play uh, as a spend-up. I actually can't believe I'm saying this. I think I might prefer him over Tyreek Hill. Um, and I think I might prefer him over Jamar Chase if T. Higgins is back. Um, Chase is the obvious one who everyone's going to use. He's going to be the most popular. He's, I mean, the, 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 the narrative on top of putting up 7 million fantasy points, it's just a matter of how much chalk you want to eat. I have no problem using him. It's just, again, how, don't, don't, build a, don't, don't build a lineup with, with your, you know, the, the chalky running backs, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, and expect that you're going you're gonna to be different. Um but other guys who are, you know, you know, Jordan Addison is another one that's going to be popular uh, with with no Jefferson. I think that the, the easy pivot is is to go to KJ Osborne, and the really, I think the popular one is going to be uh, Hawkinson and Addison from that game. We'll get into tight ends in a minute. Um, I think Tyreek will have some ownership. I'm probably going to just grip my teeth and 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 say uh, maybe not. Um, I also like I, I I the thing is I like Nakua. I just can't figure out how to get Cup Nakua lineups in there without using the Jeff Wilson and uh Roshan Johnson like backfield. You know what I mean? You need to you need to you, you want to pay 8k and 9k for receivers on the same team. There is a reasonable enough chance if the game script goes right, those guys are gonna have double digit targets. Each of them could have double digit targets. But I like the idea of, of in those stacks using Tutu Atwell as kind of a differentiator. Um we'll talk about tight ends in a little bit. But I, you know, again, I, I really like Osborne. Uh, some of the value plays that stand out: Michael Thomas is forty nine hundred, Christian Kirk at fifty four hundred. I think are both very solid plays. Um, from a lower own standpoint, Devontae Parker is cheap enough, and supposedly he's on the trading block. I think this could be a spot at thirty five hundred where we can use Devontae Parker against the Raiders, um, just as an as an extreme value. But my favorite value is I am going to go right back to if T Higgins is out, instead of playing some Chase lineups, and I will play some Chase also. But I'm going to go right back to Tyler Boyd at 4,600. Um, Rashid Shahid, I think, is interesting. And uh, it's it's just kind of hard this early because we still don't know exactly who's playing. But those are the guys who sort of stood out for me. So I'm going to let you take it away. Yeah, I mean, I really like what you said. Um, you know, I do try to get some of these stacks that are kind of expensive every now and then, like like the Nakua and uh, Kappa lineups. I, I really like I had some of that last week in one of my main buy-ins. You know, I, I really like that game. I, my problem was I had a lot of Devontae Smith run back, and that was the, that's where it did me in. I did have some Dallas Goddard there too, so that worked out. But um, like, I don't mind the Waddle and the Hill type thing. That's an expensive stack with Tua. The difference with the the Rams stack, you get a little cheaper because Stafford's price is a little bit a little bit cheaper than Tua, so that stack comes down. But 
really these runbacks are what hurts you. You know, you got to find the Adam Thielen that was cheap, but he's not as cheap anymore. You got to find, you know, like on the Ram stack, you do have more and stuff like that. I mean, if we filter by that game, Rondell Moore is only 3,500. So he's definitely a solid play run back for that. But we did talk about not running it back as well. If they have mm-hmm. a higher total than the game. I think this one shoots out a little bit. So I would want, would want to run back. In that game, I think some of the other games you don't want to run back are the totals that are like 30 to 16 or something like that. But, I mean, they've been working out. So I really like mm-hmm. that. You know, you got some lower ownership. I'm, I'm on St. Brown against Tampa Bay. I think that's a fine play. Mm-hmm. Um, I like these low. I've been all over this Christian Kirk this year. I think he looks really good. He's going to be super chalked, though. Um, but 5400 I don't know. They never raise his price. DK Metcalf in the Seahawks game I do like. I did forget to mention one running back play, Kenneth Walker. He looked lower owned. He was pretty low owned, and I, I did yeah. talk about him, but I didn't say him as a play, but I kind of like that game a little bit. I think mm-hmm. Cincinnati hasn't been really doing that good, but if you like Chase and he's chalky, you know, you could always do the running back receiver correlation in that game, do like Walker to Chase here at 8,300, mm-hmm. or do it with Boyd. Tyler Boyd that uh, Bobby mentioned was a great play. I like him. Um, He, he gets a lot of work. It's it's just he, he got a lot of balls at him the other day, but we don't know on T. Higgins. I did just get some news, actually, on the show. It's a little late for that, but looks like Deshaun Watson is not expected to play this week per one of the mm. beat writers, so that's yep. interesting news. Um, we'll have to diagnose that on 11 o'clock on Sunday, so check us out then, guys. We yep. also got no Justin Jefferson also from Minnesota this week, so that stack is kind of cheap, and you know Addison's kind of not priced up to be an elite receiver, K.J. Osborne, right? Yeah. So I, like, I actually think that I, I would be surprised that that game has a low total and it seems kind of fishy, but I, it's got to be pretty chalk. Like th- those were cheap receivers in that game. have got to be fairly chalky. Yeah. Right? So we're going to, obviously we're going to have to find some value there, right? Like Bobby's saying those cheap receivers are probably going to get some love. We got Osborne, Anderson, even this Brandon Powell at three K. I mean, someone's got to catch a ball, right? They're usually a pretty pass heavy team and Madison and Cam Akers are Madison. hasn't looked that great. Cam Akers just got there, but um, you know, Madison hasn't ran the ball that well, but I do like a little Madison. But these guys are probably going to be higher on than what we're talking about here. So um, mm-hmm. that's a good point that uh, Bobby made there um, as well. And then, you know, you got the Eagles against the Jets. I'm kind of off that game. But the ownership's going to be off that game too. So you never know when a good stack like there comes, you know. And then you got Jack Kelvin Ridley's. He's going to get lower ownership. from. He had some big monster games there, that one monster game early. He gets a lot of looks. Could be viable in that game. I don't mind it. I mean, they are Indy, Indy's probably going to slow it down a little bit too. So um, that, there's that. And then uh, Chris Olive against Houston. Houston's been playing fast this year for a three percent owned guy at sixty six hundred. He's questionable. There's a lot of questionable guys here. We'll see who's in. Check back on Sunday, um, and then we'll we'll get some of these guys in. They're just so there's a lot of cheap guys I like. I mean, even for Vegas, we didn't talk about Vegas or nothing. I mean, Jacoby Myers been getting a lot of work at fifty eight hundred. That's a really good price tag, but he is going to get owned. So we'll watch that game and see what happens. He's questionable, but I I, I did get an announcement that he was uh, moved to healthy this week. Michael Thomas he probably keeps dropping in price or staying the same forty nine hundred. Um, I didn't talk about that Houston game, but they've been playing fast this year, and I feel like there's going to be an explosion game over there. And then um, KJ Osborne here forty five or forty four hundred. We talk about that a little bit. We're unsure on T Higgins, but Tyler Boyd at forty six hundred a good play at low ownership. Bengals are going to have another big game. Uh, Tyler Boyd scored three touchdowns before, guys. It could could go to Boyd versus Chase this week. So don't chase the chase. <laughs> I get you. Ooh, I just come up with that. You like that, Bob? I know. I like that. That's good, man. I was surprised. Yeah, That's usually like right me and Chief. You like it. that? A little, a little exciting jokes, like in this usually video. Out. Today. Let's go. We're probably running out of time. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I like, I like what you were saying. I did want to touch on a few things. Like the, the DK Metcalf situation is in Seattle. Like if he doesn't play – Lockett's going to be a good play, but I'm going to, I'm going to go on a limb and say that I think that Smith and Jigba, it, re- regardless of DK, whether he plays this week, I mean, definitely if he doesn't play, I'm going to play him. I'm going to start taking shots with this guy. There's a lot of, like they haven't run any real routes for him. They've been just running everything behind the line of scrimmage basically and trying to let him make a play, but they like this guy. And there's the whole Geno Smith talking to him on the sideline. And he was sort of down on himself about, a, about a, dropping a ball. And Geno's like, no, no, it's my fault. It's always my fault. Remember, it's always my fault. You're, you're great. You're perfect. Like there's there's a lot of love for this kid, even though we haven't really seen it yet. So especially if DK's out, then he becomes the wide receiver too behind Lockett. Then you have another cheap stack in Seattle, sort of going along with that Bengals Seattle thing that we were talking about. Um, I also wanted to throw out that Josh Downs uh, 
I, I think we got to keep ch- taking shots on him. He's a he, he, always a giant play threat, and he's starting to get more and more work regardless of who's quarterbacking in Indianapolis. So I, I want to throw that one out there, which I forgot. Um, tight end is interesting. I'll, I'll jump over there now. Yep. Uh, Zach Ertz fits into the game stack I like in Arizona and the Rams. I don't love his ownership. So if you want to do something, you know, a little different, hasn't paid off great, doesn't seem like it's going to be better because we now have Cooper Cup in the mix. But that game from Tyler Higby is going to come at some point. Um, and I, I don't mind Tyler Higby as a pivot off of the uh, the Zach Ertz shock if you wanted to play keep it in that game. I do like Hawkinson a lot, but he's going to have really high ownership and just, just something to consider. Um, Evan Ingram is going to have high ownership. I'm, I'm okay fading that. Uh, I'm going to go back to what, to, to, to the play that I said last week that no one seemed to, everyone sort of, uh, seemed to seem to not have any interest in. And that was Kyle Pitts. Um, I do think you're going to see more and more from this guy, whether they trade him or not. Uh, this is, he's 3,500. Uh, we, we saw some of the stuff he can do last week. And I think that he's a really interesting play, uh, you know, low on high upside, and then Cole Komet on the other side, if you're, you know, we're talking about playing the, the, the chalky Hawkinson instead, maybe we play Komet or maybe we play Komet and Hawkinson and double tight end one week, because I do think that Komet is going to have like no ownership. And um, I already mentioned, that I like the DJ Moore combination with fields. Why not go Komet and get a little bit weird with it, save some money and uh, maybe play Hawkinson, you know, in the flex on the, on the, on the, the double tight end. It's just something I've been thinking about. Um, the other one for me was, I am going to keep burning money, lighting money on fire with Durham Smythe. Um, I think they're going to try and get this guy in the end zone at some point. And uh, I got my George Kittle week last week. The only lineups I played in the showdown had George Kittle as captain. I, I, I still think it's kind of tempting at 5K for me in a week where they might really need some help. So those are the guys who stood out the most for me. Who do you like at tight end? Yeah, I like that. Uh, all your, uh, sorry, all your plays there. I'm seeing Hawkinson and not that much ownership, but like you said, so I think the ownership's probably going to trend up with the Vikings this week as more people start talking about them a little bit, their value, yeah. someone's got to catch the ball, no Justin Jefferson, the usage goes somewhere, right? So this 3% here, this, I mean, you can even see that Saberson might have them a little bit lower, but then you got uh, ownership of 8.4 by the, the, the aggregate projection, which I like to look at. Sam Laporte is questionable. I really like him. He 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 went down. And catch, how do you catch two touchdowns and go down in price? I don't get that. Oh, no, wait. He was yeah, five. that's uh, weird. No, no, he was 5K. I keep thinking he was 6K. He was oh, you're 5K. right, you're right, you're right. I actually thought the same thing. That's weird. I was like, man, 6K went down 400? That was weird. No, he went up 600. Not bad price bump. He's getting up there a little bit. But he's been he's been, he's been been a great play. So Dallas got it at 4,800. He only went up 400 bucks, and he had a monster game. Bigger game than uh, Laporta. I always mm-hmm. like a little bit of Dallas Goddard. I've been high on him all year, drafted him a lot. He hasn't really done much this year except last week. So mm-hmm. maybe he keeps trending up. Cole Komet like, got a real good connection with Justin Fields. Bobby likes that game. I like that call on that 4,600. He is questionable. Stay with us on Sunday. You'll, you'll, we'll find out if he's good to go. John o. Smith's been kind of weird for the, the Atlanta team because I, I like Kyle Pitts. Um, but 3,500 Kyle Pitts is still at against Washington. It's the low ownership guy I had last week. Did okay. Medium points. I mean, I, I'm expecting some big games similar to like Tyler Higby. One of these days, you know, Pitts will actually have a big game. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's a wash. I don't know. Tyler Higby, I always like a 4K, great price. That game we really like that you can stack Cooper Cup, Higby, Matt Stafford. Really like that with Ron Elmore run back. You kind of talk some stuff like that. Um, You know, you got some other lower owned tight ends like Smythe. At 2,900, he's that cheap tight end we might need this week. You always try to dumpster dive for one of these tight ends. You know, some of these guys blow up. You know, John o. Smith's been cheap, and he's been blowing up. You know, Smyth's going to have Noah Fan at 3K. We like that game. We can stack, you know, Geno with DK and, and Fan or something, or Lockett and Fan. Get different, you know, and and then run it back with Chase or something, or, or Joe Mixon if you like that way, if you want the running back out of that game. So, I mean, that's kind of what I do is I kind of put it in my stacks, or I'll do a running back. Um, a running back like Addison or not Addison, Madison and um Cole Komet in this game or something, or or you know like um Ert, Ertz. We didn't talk about him. He gets a lot of usage for thirty six hundred, great price, but his ownership is sky high. He, he and he didn't look that great last week for what it's worth. He did get that touchdown, kind of boosted up his total. But I mean, obviously he's been getting a lot of usage and looks in the red zone. So, uh, but they do play that McBride guy. So be careful with that one. I mean, he could go out there and get like two catches or or nothing. 
You know, the, the McBride gets a lot of looks. They even had the third string tight end in there too. So, but but his price tag is really relevant. If he, he does get two touchdowns or a touchdown even, and and six catches or five catches or something, that's quite a bit of work for a thirty six hundred dollar tight end. And, and we that's a run back to that game. We like if you like Puka and uh, Cooper, you can run it back with Ertz at a thirty six hundred, a cheap cheap option. Gets a couple touchdowns. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm looking at today, Bobby. So yeah, yeah. Now that makes sense to me. Um, you know, hey, you know what we talked about before on defense. We talked about how we didn't have really, really cheap defenses that looked, you know, really good. And I feel like this week we we have some defenses that I that I'm definitely well well behind. Um, I love, even though I'm I'm interested in that game, I love the Bears defense at 2,500. Um, I think I'm going to mix that in and wherever I'm not using that game, and maybe even a couple places where I do use that game. It's something I like to try to do, and it's just no one ever does it. But if you treat your defense as if they're basically a position player and they end up with 12 or 14 fantasy points and you get it as part of a game stack, one of the touchdowns goes to a defensive touchdown. You're still actually staying in the game stack, which people just don't seem to realize because you are negatively correlating and technically. But if you have a guy like Cousins who's going to throw for, you know, the, the team that turns the ball over the most in NFL history, this this Minnesota Vikings team. And then you've also got the fact that they've, th- you know, the, through the first three weeks, they've thrown for what? Cousins threw, threw for like 400 yards a week. Um, so I kind of like that. I, I do like the bears, uh, defense, but my number one defense by far and away, the, my, my strongest bet of the week, my everything is, I think the lions are going to absolutely beat the hell out of Tampa Bay. And I love the lions defense against, uh, I think this is, this is the Baker gets exposed game. And I think that, the, that, 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 that pass rush is just going to eat that guy alive. I, <laughs> I think the lions defense, the bears defense, those are going to be my main two ones. I will throw in some a little Panthers here and there just because they're 2K flat. I know it's Miami. You're kind of hoping for, you know, a pick or, or a weird turnover to, to, to score a touchdown because Miami's going to score points no matter what. Carolina actually has a pretty good defense considering that they're one of the better 2K defenses. They just, they turn, they, they, their offense goes so quickly. The defense never gets off the field. So it makes the defense look worse than they actually are. Um, so those are my favorite ones. If I had to spend up on any defense, it would be Miami. But I'm mostly pretty concentrated on these Bears and on these uh, Lions, and uh, I'm happy to see they're not the highest own defense. So that's that's where I'm at for defense. Yeah, I really like those takes. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have too much more to add, maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, the, the, the Panthers at 2K, though, just the 2K price, what gets me. We haven't had a lot of that this year. So this will be the second week in a row we do got a 2K defense. It's nice. Used to it. We used to have like multiple two K defenses. Yeah, it used to be a lot better for that. There's yeah. like three or four defenses were two K or something. Like the bad teams are really two K. But you know, you get a lot of these mid tier defenses we've had to play this year. Maybe that's why the ownership spread out, starting to spread out a little bit more. You know, the Vikings seems to be pretty chalky, but I, I don't know why their defense is absolutely trash too. Spares mm-hmm. are trash too. I mean, but they they get turnovers right. Like Fields runs it, maybe fumbles it. Kirk Cousins throws a pick six constantly, almost every game, almost. <laughs> I mean, somewhat he about the guy missed it, got tackled on the last one or something. So, like, you can play both sides of that defense. I understand why they're own, but, I mean, don't forget about these other defenses. You know, like, mm-hmm. obviously the Bears at 2,500, great price tag uh, for them. Um, then the the buck, the uh, not the Bucks, the I mean, the uh, Panthers at 2K. I mean, I, you could play the Bucks and the Browns. The, the, I mean, the Browns has a good defense. They actually have a good defense, but I mean, they're obviously playing the 49ers. Which yeah, maybe be- that is a little better of a play than I thought. For 2200 that no one's going to play. I mean, actually, they're kind of chunky here if they get a little ownership. But um, interesting. I mean, that's interesting at 2200. They actually have a really decent line and the linebackers, and they've been playing well. But mm-hmm. I mean, the 49ers are very, I think, a very elite offense, and they can beat you many, many ways. So that really mm-hmm. hurts your defense. And the fact that their offense might be without Watson, they're not going to do anything. That defense will be out there the whole time. So, yeah. like, 49ers is probably the best offense to play versus not the Browns defense. But the Jets at 2,800 is always serviceable because their defense is also elite, might be mm-hmm. the best in the league. Um, but I, I'm trying to find these price tags. The Lions might be the best. Might be my high owned defense. Actually, I really do like that Baker. Although, although I do like some game stacks of that, I think the twenty seven hundred for a nice pass rush is going to be is is going to be pretty good. So, yeah, those are my defenses. I kind of like the Lions and some of these cheap ones, and then I'll just kind of stay with what Bobby's got going on. So, 
Yeah, I, I think the Lions are my favorite as well. So hopefully we can we can have a conversation with Sheets in case they pick up steam on on Sunday, and then we'll we'll, we'll go into all of that why why it doesn't make sense. All right. Well, <laughs> anyway, we, we're gonna have to get out of here in a minute. But so so I'm gonna talk real quickly. I'll just yep. go through my favorite game stack as of right now: Chicago, Minnesota, followed by the Rams and uh, Cardinals, followed by. I think I'm kind of into your idea with the uh, the Seattle Cincinnati game and, and maybe just playing a little more of Seattle than than you know to get a little bit off the chalk. And I kind of like the idea the other idea you mentioned with the maybe playing the the hammer passing stack for the Dolphins. Maybe they score seven touchdowns in the first half. You never know with this team. You know what I mean? They're breaking every record out there. So those are the ones I'm looking at most heavily uh, right now. Yeah, I definitely like those calls, Bobby. Um, you know the. Yeah, Miami. I've been I'm light on in best ball, so it really hurts me to say that they've been explosive, but they have been. It just depends on if they keep the foot on the pedal, you know. If they start to slow down or or mix and match some other players or something, or someone gets hurt, you know, it could cause a problem. Tua hasn't stayed healthy for the whole seasons much, you know, in the past here. So they are a good offense. I think they have very elite. You know, they lost a chan. That sucks because he's he was my best ball guy. I was super heavy on him. I was all in on him. I have a lot of him. That sucks. I lost him for four weeks. Twitter's going crazy over and I, I understand. So we're mm-hmm. just gonna have to get through. Hope he comes back and plays well. But um, I think we're on to the last step, right? Your hot take portion that we got to do every week. <laughs> well, we don't we don't necessarily have to, but I'll. I'll, I'll I got I'll, one. I'll... I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, I'll I'll <laughs> throw one out there, and uh, <laughs> I actually didn't have it as ready. You're more ready than I am for this team. So I'm going to say that uh, the winning there will be three players from the Minnesota Chicago game in the winning lineup. Three. Uh, I might change my tune on Sunday morning though for my hot take because the weather in that game is a little questionable. So that's 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 my take is that three players from that game are on the the optimal lineup. Yeah, sounds like Bobby's got a two plus one stack in that one big time and going all in, you know, or something yeah. or, or three from one team and not the other. You never know. Yeah, you can get kind of weird out there, guys. These Millie Maker lineups get kind of weird. Play yeah. this weird stuff that we talk about. All right. Well, I think I don't know. It was a hot take, and then you kind of look at it. And it's not really a hot take. Hey, but, go for it though. I mean, I think he's priced up. I said these six to seven K running backs. I kind of like this week. Maybe the cheaper receivers because I found some value receivers that I like that I talked about. But I think, you know, we keep talking about the Cincinnati and Seattle game, but nobody's talking about Kenneth Walker. Everyone's like, oh, the backup's getting work. But Walker could easily score two touchdowns in this game, for, force Cincinnati to pass, run it back with Tyler Boyd or Chase. I think Kenneth Walker is my play of the week. I didn't talk about him much in the running back. You had to watch the whole video to get that. But I, I kind of like him. Like last week I called out Brees Hall had a big game. I think Walker, I've been on him a little bit when he scored two touchdowns. He's he's going to break a 100-yard game uh, soon, and I think we want to be ahead of the curve. So that's uh, my play. I think I'm going to go with Kenneth Walker this week. I like it. Anyway, um, yeah, sounds good to me. Uh going to say good luck to everybody, and uh, we'll join us 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, Rody, I'm going to let you take us out of here. Yeah, I better write that Kenneth Walker thing down, right? So we got to talk about it on Sunday. You know, I'm going to – I'm going to – I'm going to – I've noted it. I don't forget about it, you know. So Ken yeah. Walker's my guy this week. Because the last week I, I should have played it. more Brees Hall, right? I would have been doing way exactly. Better. Exactly. I had him in some of my bigger buy-ins, but I didn't have. So the we're right saying receiver. lock in, lock in Walker, huh? Yeah, lock in Walker. I'm gonna lock him in. Bobby right. loves locking in players, guys. If you didn't, know, <laughs> he's a big lock guy. <laughs> All right, so we ended with a little excitement in the video, but as always, guys, good luck. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, let's get it.